story, but as every happily ever after story she could get her hands on. I bought right into it. Romantic to the core. We lived in the pages of books, staging epic battles, going on magical adventures. Well, I was always the perfect princess, of course. And then you slay the dragon, charming prince, and then you rescue me. <laughs> and made Jane play the handsome prince more times than she cares to remember. How come you always get to be the princess? Because I'm the older sister. I'll be waiting in my castle. <sighs> Maybe that's why she became more pragmatic. But what if the prince doesn't show up, Emma? Oh, he'll show up. He always does. She may have had a point, but I remained optimistic. I've always believed that the storybook ending is possible. That there really is someone out there who's all the things I've been dreaming about since playing a princess. I guess I've been waiting for our Prince Charmings to show up and make our happily ever afters come true. Hey, Em. Hey. Thanks for meeting me. If we never met up after night shifts, I'd go days without getting any sister time. <laughs> Breakfast with the Graham girls. Hi. But Jane didn't believe in waiting for anything. Greg, I, I didn't know you'd be joining us for breakfast. Well, I invited him because we have news. We're engaged. What? Jane, let me see the ring. Oh, we did not bother with anything fancy. What do you mean? Well, she said she was happy with this one. Well, of course I'd like a diamond ring. It's just so practical right now. I'd rather use the money to spend on our wedding and... But never mind. Forget it. Now we get to plan your wedding. Well, there's not much time for that. What? Why? Okay, so we decided to have the wedding in one month. Greg's entire family will be in town for their reunion, so we figured we'd throw it together by then. Keep things simple, easy. Throw it together? Well, you'll help me, right? As my maid of honor. Jane! Of course I will. Good. Okay, I have to, um... Uh, babe, I gotta go. Wait, you are leaving? You said you wanted to help plan the wedding. Uh, next time. I will see you two later. I wish I could help right now, but I have a meeting with Frank. He said he has a surprise for me. Isn't he a silent investor? I think he's losing patience. Bruce Books isn't exactly his most thriving investment. Forget that. Today is all about you and Greg. You're getting married. Woo! <laughs> Isn't it funny how sometimes the romantic one is the one with no romance in her life? But the one place I could always find a good love story was my bookstore. A world of my own creation where I could share the wonderful stories I loved as a child with everyone who came in. Phil, you forgot to change the sign again. Did you forget to do that again? <laughs> Someone forgot to remind me to do that again. Oh, of course, it's my fault entirely. How is Jane? Well, she and Greg are engaged. Wonderful. Oh, it is wonderful, right? Yeah, of course it is. Here you go, Emma. A latte for you and an herbal tea for Frank. Alan, you are amazing. You remember everything. Don't worry, Emma. You'll meet your Prince Charming soon. Oh, I am so sorry. Eric, you beat me here. Emma, this is your surprise. You brought me a guy? No, no, this is my son, Eric. Eric, this is Emma Graham. Nice to meet you, Emma. Nice to meet you. Emma, I have to tell you, of all my investments, this is by far the most enchanting one I have, of course. The rest of them are really boring. Things like hardware stores, laundromats, stuff like that. Oh, Frank, Marilyn made you a tea. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. Would you like something to drink, Eric? No, thanks. Emma, can the uh, three of us talk in your office? Just for a minute, please. Yeah. So, Frank, I still don't understand what this is about. Well, Emma, it's simple. I brought Eric by here today because I would like him to shadow you and your business. Shadow me? He's learning about my investments, all right? And I'd like him to get a hands-on feel for your business, that's all. Two, three weeks, tops. We you want to hang out at my store for three weeks? Don't worry, I won't outstay my welcome. I have a job in Aspen in a month. Aspen? Mm -hmm. 
How fabulous. Eric went to business school. He finished top in his class. Okay, in fact, he's made a couple of suggestions that were implemented in my other businesses that helped very much. He has? Yes. You two kids have fun. I mean, I would... Frank? Frank? He shot out of here like a rocket. You provide free Wi-Fi here? Of course. When you give people free Wi-Fi, do they buy books or food? Sometimes. You know, Bruges Books is more than just a bookstore. It's a place to enjoy knowledge and culture. People who come here aren't just my customers, they're my guests. <laughs> what? Nothing. Just that a business needs more than, what did my dad call it, enchanting? A business needs more than an enchanting ambiance to thrive. You know, shadows are supposed to be silent. It's kind of one of their defining characteristics. Hey, you're home. So it was a big surprise. <laughs> you are not going to believe it. So Frank's surprise was his son, who's going to be shadowing me to learn about the store. Why? I don't know. He's learning all about Frank's businesses. Apparently, he's got great ideas. It's a lot of air quotes. I don't want to talk about that right now. I want to talk about your wedding. I know it's thick, but it's got everything in there. From wedding dresses to bridesmaid dresses, table settings, flowers. Planning all of this in weeks. That's why we're getting started now. Laughter's the best medicine. Mm hmm. Funny books, comedic memoirs, that sort of thing. Oh, wow. So instead of a Dewey Decimal System, you have an adorable pun-based system. How do your customers or, I'm sorry, guests find anything? They wander around. Bruges Books, how can I help you? Yes, this is the book lady. Okay, I'll put a couple books aside for you. Come on in anytime. People call you the book lady? Mm -hmm. That would be a good angle for your store's website. <laughs> website? <laughs> we don't have a website. You're kidding. You don't have a website? No, I like to keep things simple. It's part of our charm. It's part of the past. Okay. All right, we'll see if the URL is available. Contact the web designer. And maybe we can use the book lady idea as part of a new store name. Look, Eric. I get that you want to impress your dad and everything, but you are not making unilateral decisions here. This is my store, and it has a name. Yeah, how do you say it? Baruch? Baroche? Baruch. It's a four-wheeled carriage often referenced in Jane Austen novels and others of that time period. It was used by duchesses and other aristocrats. Yeah, no one knows that. Far be it anyone should learn a new word, especially in a bookstore. So if you insist on having an obscure name, can you at least tell me that it serves a deeper purpose? The store's subtitle. Why does the store need a subtitle? Sorry. Explain, please. It's your vehicle to another world because that's what brooches and books do. They're elegant forms of transportation. Stories allow us to understand what it's like to be someone else somewhere else. And that can be incredibly powerful. Hi. Uh, sorry, but I'm looking for Emma. That's her? No, she means the book. My namesake. It should be... Ha! Right here. Is this your first go at it? Yeah. Well, get ready to fall in love with Mr. Knightley. That's what my English teacher said. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Ah, I'm so envious when someone's about to read one of my favorites for the first time. What? Just trying to figure you out. I can see how being a hopeless romantic has helped you create this whole enchanting ambiance. But I just wonder if it may also prevent you from seeing the real world bottom line. You've known me two days. 
albeit two incredibly long days, but still. And you feel qualified to diagnose me as a hopeless romantic? Come on, you're single, in love with books, swooning over a fictitious character. Who said I was single? So you're not single? It's not a big deal. I'm single too. That is a shocking revelation. All I am saying is that your fairy tale complex could be hindering your business decisions. My fairy tale complex? You don't believe in love? Or romance? Or happily ever after? Of course I believe in love. But romance and happily ever after have nothing to do with love. What is happening right now? Story time. After story time, the parents actually buy the book. Hi, everybody. Hi, book lady. I'll just go look into the website in the office. Are we ready to hear a story? Yeah! Today's book is called Happy Spaghetti Day. <laughs> Joey didn't like to wear his hat. Not even when it was cold. Joey thought hats were no fun. Barouche Books. Their vehicle to another world. Store with a subtitle. Then Mayor Anthony declared the day, wear spaghetti on your head day. Just remember, he said, to leave off the tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my little friends, is the end for today. And there's only one last thing left for me to say. Thank you for joining. We had fun indeed. Now go, find some more quiet, and enjoy your good food. <laughs> hey, everyone, guess what? Now on, for the half hour following story time, the book of the day will be 20% off. Oh. Kids, you should get your parents to buy it for you. Yeah. Thanks for coming, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye, what was that? It's a simple but solid marketing solution. I just told you that you can't come in here and start making decisions. Excuse me? I'm just going to need a minute. Uh... Actually, I, I probably had some help. <laughs> I am so clumsy. I am so sorry. sorry. I'm sorry if I say I'm not my fair lady. Uh, <laughs> um, let me just... I'm Landon Cross. Emma. Emma Graham. I do not usually wear opera gloves. Well, I happen to like a woman with a flair for the elegant. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thank you. I, I mean, how can I, how can I help you? What brought you into my store? This is your store. Mm -hmm. it's, it's great. Um, I wanted to peruse your poetry section. Huh. I don't know a lot of men who appreciate poetry. Well, I appreciate a lot of beautiful things. <laughs> uh, well, yes, we we have a poetry section. Um, it's called Poetic License. <laughs> I love it. Um, I, I'm looking for a copy of, a, of this one poem called The Bouquet. Have you heard of it? Of course. A blossom pink, a blossom blue. Make, make all, all there, there is, is in the love. love so true. <laughs> <laughs> Emma! <sighs> um, I will be right back. Eric, I just told you that you can't... I sold nine copies of the Storytime book. Nine? It's only been like five minutes. You're welcome. Hey there. Hi. Found it. So I will take that. But what I'd really love is to take you to dinner. I think that's very possible. Use your book. Thanks. Well, you'll be hearing from me very soon. Oh yeah, you don't have a fairy tale complex. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Is Greg here? No, but he will be here any minute. Okay, then I have a minute to tell you. 
I met a guy. <gasps> Come in, Greg. Hey, honey. Hey. You ready to wedding plan? <laughs> um, I can't. That's what I came to tell you. Uh, Bobby had a job he could do. Laying bathroom tile. I can't wait till tomorrow. No, the client wants a job to start tonight. It's good money, babe. I almost forgot to... Um, got you something. Paper blades. Yeah, yours are worn out. You won't be able to see it next time it rains. And I want my baby safe. I'll put them on tomorrow, okay? Hey, Emma. Oh, hey, Greg. Love you. You okay? Huh? Yeah. Sure, he has to work. Forget Greg. Tell me about this new guy. Show me a picture. How would I have a picture of him? Um, welcome to the future, big sis. It is called the internet. Oh, you and Eric are obsessed with the internet. He wants me to start a website for the store. His name's Eric. No, Eric is... Forget Eric. The guy's Landon. Landon Cress. Jane! You got your dress? Yeah. I went to the secondhand store and they had, it was just an amazing deal. So, did you try on any others? I mean, how did you know it was the one? Well, Greg and I are on a tight budget and a strict timeline. So, you know what? It's gorgeous. And you'll be gorgeous. Thank you. Whoa, he is gorgeous. He's been surfing in Costa Rica. And to Paris. Oh, his family has a cherry that saves homeless puppies. <laughs> Landon Crest. I like this one. Excuse me. Nonfiction? Oh, it's right here. Thank you. No problem. Is there a reason you're not using this space? I'm reserving it for a theater. Clearly, it's way too small for that. A puppet theater. I think it'll really make the section special. Kids can act out books and perform their own plays. That sort of thing really brings stories to life for them. So why haven't you done it? Well, I've been saving up, but it's just a little too expensive right now. Well, I'll be sure to add it to the bottom of my list of necessary improvements. Thank you for prioritizing my life. I'm simply saying that a large unnecessary expense isn't really what you need right now. I didn't ask you what I need right now. <laughs> oh, I'll take that, Val. Thank you. I didn't. Oh, well, let's read the card. Emma, you should read this. For the book goddess who I can't stop thinking about, LK. <laughs> Such lovely flowers. What a nice touch. What? What could you possibly say about such a beautiful, thoughtful gesture? Nothing. It's perfect. Seriously, what? It's what he wrote, calling you the book goddess. I don't know. It's cute. It's because he forgot your name. <sighs> no, it's not. Okay, fine. Can you come meet me in the office to do some actual work now? This is my store. I do actual work all... <sighs> you know what? Just one minute. It's Emma. Emma? Emma Graham from Bruges Books. Oh, Emma. My book goddess. Hi. <laughs> right. I just received this beautiful arrangement of flowers, and I just wanted to say thank yeah, you. Yeah, well, I just wanted to say hi and remind you of me. <laughs> well, thank you very much. So, hey, um, are we are we on for our dinner date? You around tonight? How about 8 o'clock? Tonight would be perfect. Bye. Bye.
this is better than a soap opera. Mm, I'm going to say that again. Cookies? What? Some days you just need a cookie. Yeah, well, who wants these cookies? Those were my favorite cookies when I was a kid. They're really... Wait, why are we talking about my cookie stash? Fair enough. Moving on. Please, just make yourself at home. Thank you. So does the coffee clatch out there ever actually buy anything? Is this how you observe? That's funny, because when I do it, I'm a lot quieter. <sighs> and you know, you shouldn't be so rude. Phil and Marilyn are both former English professors. They're knowledgeable and they love literature. They're the perfect people to work here. In fact, I've been thinking of having them host a class or or book club or something. Yeah, that's a great idea, actually. And in the meantime, I'm going to need some blog entries soon. Some blog entries? To give the store an online presence, which it sorely needs. To give that presence a personality, set it apart from other bookstores. Look, if you think my store needs a website, and now the website needs a blog, then you can write it. You can do it, once you stop being afraid of it. Who said I was afraid? You can do it, Emma. You just need to mention new arrivals, old favorites, talk about the books that you love and why. Share yourself and your life, how you believe in the power of a good story. And start tonight. I'll edit your first few entries while my web guy works on a website. I have a date tonight, remember? So your personal life is more important than your bookstore? <sighs> Emma! Wait. Okay, okay, I take that back. But how about a little wager? What are you talking about? How about if after one month you're still interested in Captain Flower Arrangement, I'll personally buy you your puppet theater. But if you have predictably kicked him to the curb, and you put something useful in that space and basically agree to all my genius ideas. Wouldn't it be easier if I just gave you a gold star so you could show Frank what a great job you're doing? So you're afraid to take the bet? <laughs> no. It sounds like a safe bet to me. I know I'm still going to be interested in Landon. He's a man who understands the subtle art of romance. There is nothing subtle about this guy. I bet he goes way over the top. Rents a horse-drawn carriage or takes you on a moonlit picnic. Spoken like a true cranky cynic. Do we have a bet? We do. What makes Bruce books different? Why do stories matter? I don't know. What? Are you ready? I can't write a blog, Jane. Especially not when I have a date with the most perfect man in just a few hours. You type, I will pick out your outfit. I don't even know what Eric wants. And I can't ask him because he's so, so rude and condescending and pushy and uptight. Wow. Why don't you write about how much you dislike Eric? You clearly have plenty of inspiration there. You have a date with a handsome, well-traveled, romantic man, and all you can do is talk about how annoying Frank's son is. I know. Hey, since when is romance a selling point for you? Since my fiancé keeps ditching wedding planning for work. I'm sorry. I am the worst maid of honor ever. Okay, let's just forget Eric and this whole dumb blog. Let's do some wedding planning. No! Tomorrow! Right now, we are getting you ready for your date. So where is he taking you? I don't know. It's a surprise. Hmm. What are you... This guy keeps getting better and better. Gene, he can't see you spying on him. <laughs> Ah. <sighs> 
pretty here. Yeah, pretty flowers. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> you look nice, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Surprised? A picnic. A very fancy moonlit picnic. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yo. Thank you. How did you do all of this? Oh, I have my ways. <laughs> you know, I don't believe in doing anything if you can't completely commit. Well, I completely agree. <sighs> Here you go. Thank you. Well. To the book goddess. <laughs> you know, people actually call me the book lady. I know. I'm calling you a goddess. <laughs> hmm. So, do you, um, do you travel often? Uh, I do. I do, actually. Uh, I enjoy seeing the world. Um, my last big trip was to Costa Rica for a month. Costa Rica? How exotic. <laughs> What did you do there? A lot. Well, and not much. Uh, <laughs> I mean, some days I would, I would sit on the beach for hours and just read poetry. <laughs> that sounds like heaven. Well, I don't think I can replicate the beaches of Costa Rica, but I think the setting is pretty fantastic too, at least to me. <laughs> what would you like to hear? <clears throat> Uh, I don't know. Surprise me. How about our poem from the day we met? Mm. A blossom pink, a blossom blue. Make all there is in love so true. for allowing me the honor of your company tonight. And thank you for creating such a memorable evening. Oh, well, here's a secret. Um, I was trying to impress you. <laughs> well, mission accomplished. Uh, uh, can, I, can I call you? You better. <sighs> well, good night. Good night. I'll call you very soon. really was very soon. Hey, it's Eric. Oh, hi. What? You were hoping it was Mr. Wonderful calling. No, and he is wonderful. So I take it the first date was a success? Which was it? Moonlit picnic or horse-drawn carriage? No way, he actually did one of those things? Wow, this guy is textbook. He's thoughtful and romantic and... So did you get the first blog entry done? Well, thank you, Eric. I did have a lovely date. Thank you so much for asking. I didn't think I needed to ask since you used the adjectives wonderful and thoughtful and romantic in a 10 second span. Why are you calling me again? The blog. Oh, right. To nag me. Would you be more inspired if I sent you 350 flowers? One for every word I want you to write. Goodbye, Eric. Good night, Emma. Here I go. What makes Bruce books different? Why do stories matter? 
Delete, delete, delete. My sister Jane and I were raised on a steady diet of fish sticks and fairy tales. I bought right into it. A romantic to the core. Thing no one tells you, you have to meet a lot of slimy toads before the guy with the crown comes along. Do you know why, dear reader? Because, like any protagonist in fairy tale or great novel, you must take a journey and challenge your antagonist. That's one lesson I learned from the many books I've read in my lifetime. What might you learn through a story? You'll never know until you stop in and visit us at Baruch Books. Yay, bravo! <laughs> that was beautiful, Emma. You take in my class, I would have given it an A. <laughs> you know what? I am giving it an A. Thanks, Phil. Dad, what did you think of Emma's blog entry? I thought it was enchanting. Eric? It works. It was great, actually. Heartfelt and personal, engaging. Oh, thanks. Emma, great work. Really, really, really great. Bye! Thank you for coming! <laughs> I'll see you all next time. Buy today's book, 20% off. You know, it could be a little more elegant with the way you do that. I know, I know. You like a lot of pomp and circumstance. Flowers and picnics. Langston gonna ask you out again by a skywriting? Landon. Whatever. Listen, I wanted to talk to you about your cookbook section. I don't have one. I know. But I think you should add one. You could even call it What's Cooking. Oh, and add it to my adorable pun-based organizational system. If we created a cookbook section, you could introduce it to customers with a big event. Like perhaps throwing a book signing party. Invite local press, get some new customers into the store. You could expand your clientele and put Bruges books on the map. Who's going to do a book signing here? Carolyn Lake. The owner and chef at Carolyn's on Bellwood? Yeah, she's putting out her first cookbook. That's a four-star restaurant. Yeah, because it's really good. No, I mean, Carolyn Lake is already a name. She doesn't need my little store. I'll ask her. She's an old friend. You would do that? You would call in that favor for me? I would call in that favor for my dad, for his investment. Right. Okay, well, let me know what she says. You sure you want to take one of my suggestions before you absolutely have to? We still have three weeks left on that lap, I bet. His name is Landon. Landon? Did somebody say Landon? A delivery man brought this for you. It's from him. Huh. He wants to take me out again. You couldn't just call? Wow. This is... So unexpected. Is it though? And very interesting. Probably very expensive. Oh, no doubt about that. You know what I like about it most? It's evidence. Mm. That he doesn't know you well? No. That he's thinking about me. Mm. And he wants me to feel special. It's also evidence that I am going to get my puppet theater. That's the one I want. And I'd like my office back in three weeks. So call Carolyn. Let's do this. In every love story, there's that moment when you know something special is happening. It's pretty fantastic, huh? And at the same time, in every love story, there's a moment when you know something isn't right. Hey. Hey. Are you free? Please tell me you're free. How about sampling a dozen cakes with me this morning? Uh, I have blog entries to work on. <laughs> and if I do it now, I can actually use my own desk. Wait, where's Greg? Isn't the cake tasting appointment the only one guys typically enjoy? He forgot. He's headed across town for a job and I'm at his place fuming. I need you. Please. Okay. 
I'll be there. Thanks. Lately, I've been pretty confident in my Prince Charming and finding the man who will sweep me off my feet and show me how much he cares for me. And I want the same thing for the people around me. Everyone deserves to feel special, to feel heard, to have a real partner. Ladies, first up, we have a lemon raspberry mousse and chocolate hazelnut crunch. Enjoy. Rum. These remind me of the petite fours that Landon had at our picnic. Mm. Unreal. I'm pretty sure Greg has no idea what a petit four is. <laughs> so, tell me about him. Where do you grow up? Where do you go to school? I have no idea. Isn't that pretty standard first date conversation? It is. But it wasn't really a very standard first date. Well, what did you guys talk about? Well, we read poetry. And we talked about our favorite books and songs. Our favorite places to travel. Next up, almond amaretto and dark chocolate peanut butter. Mm, thank you. Did you have anything with coconut? Of course. I thought Greg hates coconut. Oh. Does he? <laughs> Emma, what are you wearing? Oh, Landon gave it to me. It's really nice. So, where's he taking you tonight? Up to a romantic restaurant. It's been a week, and you've had moonlit picnics, flowers, jewelry, romantic dinners, and then Greg and I have been together for years, and he's bailing on our wedding planning. Mm. Could we plan a double date? Maybe Landon will rub off on Greg. Absolutely. Landon will be a great influence on him. <laughs> if Eric wasn't such a judgmental grump, then maybe Landon could rub off on him. Teach him how to be a gentleman. Okay, that's it. I have to see who this guy is. You have not stopped talking about him since the day you met him. Mm. What's his last name? Donovan? Not this guy. He's like 80. Eric Donovan, the podiatrist? Mm, definitely not. The CEO of Eric Donovan and Company Consulting. No, I don't think so. Well, it says here they specialize in in-crisis businesses. No, it can't be the same guy. Now, Frank's son is just playing at business with his father's investments. In a couple of weeks, he's going to be flitting off to Aspen. Is it this guy? He's cute. Ah, uh, well, shall we uh, share a starter or two? Sure. Oh, do you like um, artichokes? They have this uh, remoulade on the side. Oh, no, no, no. I forgot. I pre-ordered the Chef Christini's. Oh, they come with this amazing lavender honey drizzled on top. It is, oh, decadent. Okay. Do you not like the menu? You want to go somewhere else? Oh, no. No, no. It, it's great. Actually, I don't even know what's on the menu. I've been reading the word amuse-bouche over and over again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Landon. I, I'm just a little distracted. Well, once you have the Christini, you won't be able to think of anything else. <laughs> oh, and save room for dessert because the souffle here is perfection. Right. <clears throat> Do you remember Eric from my store? He was the guy who sold you that book of poetry when we first met? Yeah. Well, he's been sort of helping with Rouge books, but I have reason to believe he thinks that my store is in trouble. I'm really worried about it. And he is just so difficult to talk to. I don't even know how to broach the subject. What do you think? Uh, well, I think we should order. Excuse me? Emma, we're just getting to know each other. We should be having fun, not wallowing in boring work talk. Look, 
the science. The best way to get over a rough day is to have a wonderful evening. Emma, when I look into your amazingly beautiful eyes, I don't want to see worry. Okay, I want to make you happy. You know, our time together is, um, well, it's precious. So we should make the most of it. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> to us. To us. reasons I love literature so much is it's a heightened version of real life. Heroes and villains and surprising plot twists. But sometimes that plot twist is a scary one. In a book, it's exciting, intriguing. In real life, it's just terrifying. Trust me, you won't regret this. Rouge Books is not just your average bookstore. It's memorable. Just like your book will be. Great. Send over the paperwork, I'll take a look. Okay. So, I was just speaking to... Okay, wow, you look interesting. I didn't get much sleep last night. Oh, hot date with Mr. Perfect. What, did he fly you to Italy to have pizza? Eric. Uh, should I assume that since you were out late with What's His Face, you don't have a new blog entry either? Is a new blog entry going to help save my store? What? I looked you up, Eric. You're not just here to learn about your father's investments. You're the CEO of an entire company that specializes in failing businesses. Yes. Yes, I am. So... Not only did you come in here and boss me around in my store, this place that I built out of nothing, this place that is incredibly special and important to me, but you've been lying to me this entire time. I'm nothing more than another number on a balance sheet to you. <laughs> Emma. Enjoy my office while it's still here. <laughs> I think it's very stupid. <laughs> only your mother, only your mother. Oh, very, be careful. Yeah. You be careful. How strong can you make an espresso, Marilyn? Oh, dear. Something wrong, Emma? No, nothing's wrong. Everything's awesome. You just need a really strong espresso. So you can enjoy the awesomeness. Right. Latte or cappuccino? One of each. Right. To go. So tell me, how bad is it? It's fixable. Without some considerable changes, you'll be in serious trouble within six months. How could I have not known that? Most people don't see it coming. They justify income fluctuations attributed to various factors, some of which are valid, some of which aren't. You're in it, Emma, day to day. As long as you can pay everyone each month, keep your doors open, make a small profit, you think you're doing okay. Yeah. The problem is, is that you have no plan in case things start going badly. Online sales have threatened a lot of businesses, but bookstores are disappearing faster than any other brick and mortar. Look, don't beat yourself up just because you didn't see it coming. This is what I do. That doesn't really make me feel any better. How about this? Back when my dad was first considering investing in your store, I urged him to pass. You really don't understand how to comfort people, do you? My point being is that all I was looking at in your words was the balance sheet. But I get it now. 
But Rouge Books is more than just another bookstore. Your place is special. Great. So I won't be the only person who misses it when it goes down in flames. Look, do you want to fix this? Or do you want to wallow in self-pity? I want to fix it. Good. Then let's fix this. I really think that this cookbook signing can set a lot of motion for you. Just like your idea of having Phil in Maryland host book clubs, this is a way to show people that Rouge is a destination, different than any bookstore they've ever been in. Okay. What do we have to do? Well, I think we need to buy some scanners and software. Digitally catalog your inventory, bring the bookstore into the 21st century. Then we'll create a big sale for the day of the signing. We'll create a cookbook section. And, you know, just plan the best cookbook signing anyone's ever seen. Okay. Let's do it. We can do that. I, I mean, we can do it, right? It sounds pretty involved and expensive. Well, that's why we're going to my dad's office. Your dad's office? You coming? Emma, I apologize that I wasn't more upfront with you about why I was bringing Eric into the store. But I didn't want to needlessly alarm you if there was nothing to worry about. Well, that's why we're here, Dad. It is. Because I know that you're not only committed to keeping Baruch Books' doors open, but to making it more successful. And we have a plan to do that. But we're going to need to buy some equipment and supplies, so it's going to take a little more investment capital. I'm listening. Baruch Books is not just a store. It's a destination. It's warm and inviting, with an incredible charm and a quirky personality. But unfortunately, very few people know about it. But we have a plan to introduce the city to Emma's store. Make it clear that Baruch Books is not just a place to buy a book. But it's the place to bring your kids to story time. To get an insightful and personal recommendation from the book lady herself. It'll get new customers into the store. It'll get us some press. And with Emma's blog and her website, we'll have a distinctive online presence. Over time, I think this will really help to boost business. Great plan. I think we should do it. Really? all the equipment I want to get it done. Besides, now I can know for sure if there's anything else I need to order or get installed for the book signing. I guess the only thing that makes sense is to get it all done tonight. And I can also make room for the new cookbook section at the same time. I'm going to need a lot more coffee. Wait, you're not going to do it all yourself, are you? I mean, that will literally take you all night long. I know, but it's my store and I want to do whatever it takes to improve it. Besides, Marilyn and Phil are kind of past the age of pulling all-nighters. I'm not. Okay, well, let's talk business. We need to order a bunch of cookbooks for the new section. I talked to Carolyn's publisher. They're going to give you a deal on a dozen of their publications. We should call a few other places, too, just to round up the section. Oh, that's a really great start. You know, I was actually thinking that for the party, we could have the waiters serving appetizers from Carolyn's cookbook, and they could say things like, would you like to try a bacon wrapped fake from page 23? That's really smart, Emma. Thank you. Well, she is very smart. Landon, what are you doing here? With a puppy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, are you the cutest thing I've ever seen? <laughs> he is adorable, but I can't take care of a puppy right now. Oh, no, no, he's not for you. No, pet adoption's a very serious thing. You know, my family actually runs a, a rescue foundation. Of course. And we never want people to give away animals as if they were an old sweater or a box of chocolates. Hmm. But I thought I'd bring you a little visitor, right? No one could be stressed out when they're playing with the puppy. No, no, right? no, no, no. Oh, um, Lady, you remember Eric, right? Sure. Hey. So listen, I thought we could play with this guy for a little bit, and then we could drop him off the rescue and take a drive up the coast to my convertible. Then we can take a walk on the beach, and then we can go to this hole-in-the-wall seafood restaurant. So for dinner. Best many oysters you'll ever have. at once. Landon, that sounds incredible, but I'm going to be here all night. We have so much work to do. Oh. 
okay? I'm sorry, I shouldn't even bother your work. Oh, no. No, it was really nice. Why don't we plan something else right now? Actually, I was thinking it might be nice for you to meet my sister and her fiancé. I think we could do a double date this week. Yeah, I'd love to meet your family. Great. <gasps> okay, bye, little guy. Mm -hmm. Well, it's really good to see you, Emma. You know, five minutes with you is better than hours with so many other people. Hey, say farewell, book goddess. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> That's where the new cookbook section will go. Awesome. It's getting really late. We still have a ton of books to scan. Just a few more minutes. So you really like cooking, huh? It's a very practical hobby. Practical. You truly are the anti-romantic. I just don't value romance the way that you do. I know you think I'm some kind of curmudgeon, but I'm not. I just don't think that that's what really matters in a relationship. If you understand someone, if you truly love them, then the romance is in the little moments. You know, it's not in the moonlit picnic. It's in the fact that I'd say, skip the fancy baked goods and pack those gross cookies from the grocery store that remind you when you were a kid. <laughs> These cookies aren't gross. Anyway, so you don't like to cook? I never learned. There were a lot of TV dinners and canned soup and hot dogs when I was growing up. My parents got divorced when we were really young. My mom raised us on her own. Must have been hard on your mom. It was. She never let us know it. She taught me to love books. She's pretty amazing. Without her, maybe Bruce books wouldn't even exist. I can't even imagine it. So what about you? What got you into consulting? Uh, between undergrad and business school, got a lot of different jobs and internships to figure out what aspect of the business world I wanted to get into. It became clear pretty fast that what I was really good at was problem solving. That's interesting. That or I'm just a professional finger pointer. <laughs> Don't say that. Do you like it at least? Sometimes, absolutely. Other times I wonder... What? Other times I just wonder if move from job to job criticizing other people's ideas because I never figured out what truly inspired me. Or maybe it's the opposite. You're too good at too many things to settle on just one. That's unnecessarily kind. <laughs> you clearly like helping people. Clearly. I know you care about what happens to me. With this store. <clears throat> right. Probably fine, Jane. I never came home last night, Craig. Emma. <sighs> Hi. I was worried sick about you. You never came home last night. I called you, I texted you, and you never responded. I'm sorry, the phone battery died. I must be on a sister. <laughs> I'm Eric. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, this is my fiancé, Greg. What you guys doing? Well, Eric is Frank's son. He's helping her with the store in the middle of the night while sleeping. <laughs> Stop. I'm just scanning books for digital inventory. We were just going to take a nap until 2 and then finish, but... Eric, Emma, 
You're here. Well, they slept here. Right on the story time carpet. Frank, I am so, so sorry I called you. I was having a panic attack. I guess I shouldn't be surprised she was here. And we were just doing inventory. All right, honey, let's go. Now that Emma's not trapped in an elevator or kidnapped or worse, we have things to do. Oh, and I thought that I was the dramatic one. Oh, Jane, um, Landon stopped by and I suggest we go on a double date some night this week. Sure. Oh, the great Landon in the flesh. Emma won't stop talking to Jane about him and... Jane won't stop talking to me about him. Mm. Come on. Okay, so I guess now we can finish up the inventory, and then when Marilyn and Phil get here, we can both run home and take showers. I have to go, actually. Oh? To Aspen. Yeah, I got a couple of logistics to figure out before the job starts. Um, not really sure when I'll be back. You'll be back in time for the book signing, though, right? Uh, yeah, sure, of course. Um, I'll leave you a to-do list, and... All the contact numbers for the publishers. I'm sure you can handle it. I'll see you later, Dad. He works very, very hard, that son of mine. As in all my favorite stories, there are moments in life when you're not quite sure what'll happen next. New ideas. Hi there. Hi. New people. Hungry? <laughs> can be challenging. I get bored, please. But it's how you meet those challenges. That's the exciting part. Oh, I love these look. Of course, old concerns can come up too. Doubt. But what I do now, that's my story. I am the book lady of Baruch Books. And no one can change that. And if you want to meet me, and the many writers who inhabit the shelves of my store, Please come join us next Friday night for a once-in-a-lifetime cookbook signing and cocktail party for esteemed local chef, Carolyn Lake. You won't regret it. Wow. I know, right? Food here is fantastic. We should, um, we should order a few appetizers. Sure. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Actually, I was looking at the prices. Uh, but yeah, everything sounds delicious. Oh, well, like my mom always says, one doesn't talk about money. <laughs> but please, guys, order whatever you want tonight's on me. Oh, you don't have to do that. But really, you don't have to do that, man. No, it's my pleasure. <laughs> so, um, Em was telling me you guys are having a wedding ceremony in a park. We actually grew up playing there. Literally every day after school. Emma always got to wear the princess dresses and made me be the prince in the boring old cave. Older <laughs> sisters are kind of bossy, what can I say? Either way, it was a very special place for me, which is why we chose it. Well, a toast to the wedding day. Mm -hmm. This time you get to be the princess. Oh, how sweet, Landon. Thank you. You are such a gentleman. That was nice. I enjoyed meeting them. It was nice. And it was good for me to get away from the store for a couple of hours. Although I have to admit, my to-do list is running through my brain right now. I just have so much to get done for the book signing. I have to finish the display windows. I need to finalize the hors d'oeuvres menu. I need to make sure that this is... Emma, would it be okay if we left the work talk at the store? It kind of feels like every time I need to talk about the store, you're not interested in listening. No, it's not. It's not that. Well, then what is it? Here. Uh, Emma, relationships take time and, and commitment. You know, I feel like I've done everything I can to show you how I feel about you. You know, I've been 
clear as to how much you've been on my mind. And, well, I just, I guess I want to know that I'm on your mind, too, more than work. And we haven't spent any time together this week, and tonight I had to share you with your sister and her fiancé. I thought that you wanted to meet them. No, I did. No, but now I want to be with you. I guess what I'm trying to say, Emma, is that I'm crazy about you. Up, sweetie. Mm, just barely, but I am. Oh, I'm gonna get you a coffee. And I think I'll have some of my gross childhood cookies, Eric. Your coffee? Well, I just needed some air, not coffee. Well, coffee shop air, not not office air. You know what I mean. Oh. <laughs> What's going on over there, ladies? A man takes you to a fancy dinner and somehow ends up apologizing the next day? He either says something incredibly stupid. Well, yes, some bitch. A wiser man would have handled our discussion much better. I'm sorry our evening took that turn. I really do love spending time with you. L.K. Sounds like this Landon's a keeper, huh? All right, ladies. Let's let Emma get back to work. And besides, it's time to start our inaugural Barouche Books book club. Will I be seeing everybody at the book signing at the end of the week? Yeah. Can't wait. Has everybody finished reading the book? Well, who wants to start? Well, we're going to need at least three servers. They can wear Bruce Books t-shirts. Okay. Great. Thanks so much. <sighs> Sounds like a lot's getting done around here. Hi. <laughs> um, yes, it is. I didn't know you were coming back today. Last minute decision. He's lucky you don't have allergies. <laughs> I think it's an apology arrangement. Apology? For what? It doesn't matter. So, how has Aspen? Aspen was snowy. <clears throat> so, how are you? I don't mean this to sound like a jerk, but you look a little tired. Are you taking care of yourself? I am pretty tired. But Jane and I made dinner plans tonight to unwind, so... That should help a bit. Good. Speaking of Aspen, I bought something while I was there. I popped into this rare bookstore for research to see what they were doing to capture a niche market. And, uh, couldn't resist. It's a rare edition of Emma. Eric, this is so... It's nothing. This is the exact opposite of nothing. It's Jane. Hello? Emma, would it be okay if I bail tonight? Greg and I both finally have an evening off together and... We were thinking we should assemble wedding programs and work on the seating chart. No, you were thinking that. I was thinking we should watch football. Your wedding is in less than two weeks. Don't worry about me. Okay, just as long as you're sure. Bye. Jane cancel on dinner? Yeah, she's spending some much-needed quality time with Greg. It's just as well. There's so much to do. No, you still need a break. Come on. Why don't I make up something? Where? Here. Here? Come on. Thank 
disappeared in school. After all of seventh grade, I had a really bad overbite. I'm sure you had those perfect teeth all along. Are you kidding? I had to wear braces for two whole years. And I used to change the rubber bands to go with the holidays. Red and green for Christmas, red, white, and blue for the 4th of July. I'm sure it was very fetching. So what are we making here? A tartine. What? A French open-faced sandwich. I'm taking a plain ham and cheese sandwich, added some tomato and honey mustard dressing from the salad, and now I'm going to melt it all together. We'll have a little green salad on the side. That is some impressive improvisation. I don't even know how to throw an omelet together. Well, you should let me teach you sometime. You come over and I can give you a little cooking 101 lesson. Really? That'd be fun. Yeah? Okay. Great. It's a date. Date? Yeah. I thought. Eric, I'm seeing Landon. Well, I thought with the apology flowers that wasn't going so well anymore. I know, but I mean, we're still seeing each other, and I mean, I. Nah, uh, yeah, you still want him hanging around. I get it. I lost the bet. Eric, I didn't think that you and I. It's the sandwiches. Should probably eat and get back to work. Greg? But you sounded like you were laughing and having so much fun on the phone. I know. And then he got another call and he took another job. <laughs> he said it'd be super fast, but of course it wasn't. And now I finished all of the wedding programs by myself. I think I'm ready for this wedding to be over. Don't say that. Well, Landon would never do this to you. He dotes on you. He hangs on to your every word. He is so romantic. And I'm not even saying that I need that from Greg. I just wish he were a little more considerate. Lately, he has just been so impatient and... I don't know. Disinterested? Well, I mean, all relationships have their phases, right? And you guys are both really stressed because of the wedding. No, no. I... I'm stressed precisely because he doesn't seem to care. Is he really the man I want to marry? Is he really going to be there for me? I mean, when somebody loves you, they're supposed to be invested in the things that interest you, right? Even if it doesn't particularly interest them too. do you think? Yeah. I do. You can in. Just double checking everything. You should touch base with every vendor that's highlighted there to confirm for tomorrow. Okay. Fresh and cleaning crew should be coming in tonight after you close. If you want them to come back out to the party, they'll give you a deal. Great. That should cover everything. Are you leaving already? I was hoping I could talk to you about yesterday. It's a pretty good sandwich, right? Eric. What I mean is I wanted to Hey there. Landon. What are you doing here? We said we were going to grab some lunch today. He does have impeccable timing. I am so sorry. I, I completely forgot. That's why my girl needs some time off, right? I'll see you for the party tomorrow. I... Enjoy your lunch. We ready? Yeah. When Cinderella went to the prince's ball, she had no idea her life was about to change. She just really needed the night out.
When Rapunzel was stuck in her tower bedroom, she didn't know that one night she was going to be saved by her true love. But I know that tonight could affect the rest of my life. My livelihood, my dreams, my future. No pressure, right? Ready for this, kiddo? <gasps> as ready as I'll ever be. Everything looks beautiful, and the food is delicious. This is going to be a big hit. I really hope so. I should check my list, though. Do you guys think I've forgotten something? I've probably forgotten something. Don't but... worry, you're fine. There's George. We better go mingle. This looks incredible. You did it. Thanks. You have your speech ready? What speech? You have to introduce Carolyn. What? No. That wasn't on the list. No, I I've been writing blogs, not speeches. It's not a big deal, Emily. Just say a few words. It's not a big deal? That that's the biggest deal ever. Those few words could make or break this place. Well, what if I say the wrong thing? Or or even worse, what if I'm boring and then nobody likes to hear and then people... Breathe, please. Come with me. You can't really be worried about this, Emma. This is the easy part. I failed to see that. All you have done since I met you is talk passionately about how much you love this store. Why you created it, what you want it to be. You've been telling me for weeks, and I'll just tell them. I'm just... I'm just scared, okay? I know. But there's no doubt in my mind that you can do this. This place looks beautiful. Ready to start. Go get him. Hey, look. Here is Hi, everyone. I like to thank you all for coming tonight. I'd also like to thank renowned local chef, Carolyn Lake. She and I actually have a lot in common. We both built businesses out of nothing so that we could do the things that we loved. Although admittedly, she's a tad more successful than I. <laughs> <laughs> all I can say is I love this place. It's a celebration of life. It used to be that that celebration was just on the pages of the many books that we sell here. Stories about the most important moments in our lives. Love, friendship and family, fears and adventures, mistakes and victories. But now, Bruges Books is also a place to celebrate your lives. And we're starting by honoring Carolyn Lake in one of the proudest moments in her life, the publication of her very first cookbook. You know, I should actually go talk to my guests and, and mingle. Oh, thank you. Oh, I do? Okay. Well, I'll be around. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. And food, too. Could you guys hold on a minute? I'll be right back. Emma. 
Yeah, you did it. You did it. <laughs> it's great. It's a beautiful night. Uh, books are flying off the shelves. They're selling like crazy. And two people actually asked me if they could rent this place for their very own events. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah. Where's Eric? Uh, yeah, he uh, he had to go work work stuff. Really? I didn't think you'd be right in the middle of a party. No, but I think this whole thing just took a little more out of him than he expected. Deliveries that I'm. Oh, come on. Has Landon spoiled you so much that you can't appreciate a beautiful bouquet of flowers? I know. He's great, but... But. Wait, did you say deliveries, plural? I really can't believe that Landon sent something else. thinks he lost the bet. What bet? He told me that if in a month's time I still wanted Landon around, then he'd buy me my puppet theater. And did he lose the bet? No. I mean, I don't know. Landon is the perfect guy. He's everything I ever wanted, and... You're not happy. is that? Oh, it's not so awful. It's not your fault you fell for somebody else. Eric may not be sending you flowers, but he's been there when it really counted. How could I have been so stupid? <laughs> huh. It's Greg. Well, you take it. Oh, we'll talk later. Okay. Hello? Has Jane called you? Is she with you? Is something wrong? She's gone. What do you mean she's gone? No, I mean she didn't show up at her last meeting with the ministers. She's not at the house. I've called her so a dozen times. Oh, okay, don't panic here, Brad. If she's gone, what am I supposed to do? Where could she be? I'm freaking out over here. Okay, don't worry. Look, I I'm sure there's an explanation. She's, she's been under a lot of stress lately. Yeah, I know. Probably caused by me. Emma. She's everything to me. Okay, I'm gonna call you back. Just hold tight. Okay, I'm counting on you, Emma. He called you? <laughs> of course he called me. What's going on, Janie? getting harder to look past things. Last night, when Landon rushed over to kiss you. I'm breaking up with Landon. What? What are you talking about? He's perfect. <laughs> There's no such thing as perfect. The truth is, yes, Landon is thoughtful and romantic, but not many of the ways that matter. Flowers die. Fancy dinners or just that? Fancy dinners. None of it means anything. And the stuff that does matter, Landon's not really interested in that stuff. Greg. He is the guy who drives around with you at the crack of dawn trying to find your crazy sister when her phone battery died. <laughs> he loves you so much, Janie. You should have heard him on the phone. He is in a panic. He's so afraid that he's lost you. You always thought I was so silly, waiting around for my Prince Charming. And you were right. I had it all backwards. A perfect guy doesn't just appear and change your life like in the fairy tales. You and the perfect guy bring your fairy tale to life together. And Greg has always done that for you. Yeah. Thanks, big sister. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> this is 
a really beautiful spot to have a wedding. It would be a shame to waste it. <laughs> Are you busy right now? No, what's going on? We having a picnic? No, we're not. Yeah. So, Landon, I asked you to meet me here today because this is a very special place to me. I spent a lot of my childhood here, and it's also where I cultivated this misguided Prince Charming fantasy that I've been carrying around with me my whole life. Well, it doesn't have to be a fantasy, Emma. I mean, I thought I was doing... I thought you were, too. But in all my years waiting for my, my perfect romantic man, it never really occurred to me whether or not I was actually romantic. I mean, the flowers, the picnics, poetry, and, and the puppy. <laughs> it's true. It's everything I've always wanted. But it's just not what I needed. Hmm. I didn't think I could ever go wrong with a puppy. You didn't do anything wrong. You just have to wait for the right woman. Take care, Landon. <sighs> Bye, Emma. Bye. Jane Graham, will you still marry me this Saturday? <laughs> Marilyn, he isn't called, has he? Hey, who? Oh, no, sweetie. I'm sorry. He hasn't. Okay. 
Yeah, they did. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Emma, thank you for helping me get her back. You know, all I wanted to do is make her happy. I know that now. In every great love story, there's that moment when you know that you have something special going on. I think we would all agree it's a pretty great moment, too. And at the same time, there's a moment when you know that something isn't right. I've been admittedly infatuated with fairy tales and the idea of Prince Charming since I was a little girl. But as it turns out, sometimes Prince Charming is more concerned with being charming than with being real. And sometimes the villain is more like a sheep in wolf's clothing. Airport, please. I've been waiting for my Prince Charming, Mr. Fiction, whatever you want to call him, to transform my life. I'd fall for him and I'd never be the same. I guess the truth is, Prince Charming's come in a lot of different packages. There's no one-size-fits-all Prince Charming. There is no perfect guy. There's just the guy who's perfect for you. Driver, can you stop here, please? I was so busy trying to make my fairy tale come true that I didn't realize that all those things that made Prince Charming so perfect really didn't matter to me. My real Prince Charming doesn't always wear his crown, but he's been there. Helping me slay my dragon since the moment we met. But I didn't see it until it was too late. And now he's gone off to slay other dragons. I'm just sorry it took me so long to notice. And I hope wherever his life takes him, he finds his own happily ever after. You know what I hate most about the idea of happily ever after? <laughs> after happily ever after, the story just ends. That's what happens next, that's the best part. The other thing fairy tales don't tell you, sometimes you have to climb down your tower rather than just wait to be saved. Trust me, you'll like what's waiting for you down there.